Software has its limits. Positive user feedback edition. I was working first, second level support for some years and have an old story to share. This story shows a strange way our best tech support colleague, let's call her Julia, got some acknowledgement. After some fluctuation on the tech support manager position, a new manager started. Of course, we want to do great first impressions, so we do a comprehensive onboarding together with him. All goes well and without errors until we reach our main chat software, Cisco Jabber. Trying to set up a contact list in Jabber worked fine, but adding Julia always throws an unexpected error. Thinking this is a local problem, we tried it on a different user slash laptop. Same error. A bit puzzled, we checked with the responsible team, but couldn't find anything obvious. We dropped an email to our external support and answers followed soon. A user can only be part of 500 users' contact lists. Mm -hmm. Basically, Julia has been added as contact in so many contact lists that she's reached the limits of the software. Normally, we discourage users from directly contacting us, but we had no hard policy on this. So, seems she's been the single point of contact for many users as she's always super helpful and knowledgeable. New manager and I were pretty impressed. Edited to say, I no longer have all the exact details, so these are guesstimations only. What's up guys, welcome back to Storytime with Uncle John. Today we're taking a look at r slash tales from tech support. It's funny, most of these stories end in somebody looking like a total moron, whether it's the, the guy in tech support, the end user, or somebody in between, usually the big bosses, but anyway. And uh, it's nice that people will oftentimes get acknowledgement. This is sort of a round, round about, round the corner kind of way of getting that acknowledgement. It's sort of a broken rule kind of thing, but at the same time, it shows that this lady is valuable to the company. And hopefully the new boss and everybody else around her recognizes this and, you know, helps find a way to mitigate her software issues with this contact list. And, uh, yeah, keep her, keep her there and helping people as much as she can. So not only actually helping find answers, but doing it in a way that's just not bitchy, I guess you could say that that goes a long way when, when the end user and the tech can both be reasonable people and not be antsy and nasty and rude and uptight, things tend to go a lot smoother. At least it's easier to find the answers that you need. Even if you don't find the answers, there's no reason not to be nice. So there's that. Sorry, but Intel doesn't fit into AMD. Back in the early 2000s, when the UK job centers actively tried to help you get into work, I found myself on work experience through New Deal. The work experience was in a local independent computer shop, one that builds and repairs computers while also selling computer accessories and components. The layout is straightforward. There were only three rooms. From front to back was all in one sales and work area, then kitchen, then toilet. Well, that's pretty simple. So if you're working on a computer, you can hear and see what's happening at the customer service counter. The amount of crazy repairs that came through wasn't all that often. The same with computer builds. This is one of those crazy computer builds. I was sat doing a diagnostic on a computer when a guy came in asking for a computer to be built and handed over a spec list to my boss who handles customers. My boss said that it'll just go over the list to see how much it'll cost only for me to hear this. Boss says, sorry, but it's not possible to build a computer with these components. Customer says, why not? They're all components that came out in the last few years. Boss says, true, these are components that came out recently. However, they're not compatible. Customer says, what do you mean? Boss says, sorry, but an Intel CPU doesn't fit into an AMD motherboard. You've also listed so dim memory instead of dim memory. I'm assuming that the CPU is one of those that comes with its own cooling, which in turn, just like the CPU would not fit the motherboard. My boss did a quick search on the computer and then returned to the customer. He says, although you did pick a good power supply, it's sadly not good enough. You need one that's 100 watts more powerful. The customer says, so just picking components that look good isn't good enough. Well, duh. Boss shakes his head. Sorry, but no. So dim memory is for laptops. Intel CPUs require a motherboard with an Intel socket for it. The same with AMD. Usually CPUs come with their own cooling, but some don't, so you need to pick one that fits the motherboard. From a similar build that we do, you need a more powerful power supply, or you'd end up with problems. The customer is now typing the spec list, but I want this computer. Boss says, I can order you the components, but we can't build you the computer. You'll have to try to do that yourself. Or we can go through our build list and pick out a computer to suit your needs. Customers tapping the list again, but why not these? <laughs> my God. Boss says, do you know anything about cars? Customer says, who doesn't? Boss says, okay, then picture this. Can you use diesel in an unleaded car? Can you fit a 2-liter van engine into a Ford Fiesta? What about a Lori's windscreen into a transit van? He reached under the counter and pulled out some CPUs and RAM before grabbing the customer's laptop. He then showed the customer an AMD and Intel CPU. 
Paul says there is a physical difference between the CPUs in both the shapes and the amount of pins they have. He then opened the laptop and removed the RAM. The boss said, this is so dim and this is regular RAM needed for desktop computers. As you can see, they're also physically different. As the boss returned the stuff, the customer spoke up. So the list that I've chosen is useless? The boss says, yeah, pretty much. The customer says, so what do I do? I want a new computer. Jesus. The boss pulled out a couple sheets with pre-built specs. Let's talk about your needs and wants. With that, they started discussing what sort of computer will do. I don't expect everybody to know that. Some will, some won't. You can't just assume people are going to understand the difference between Intel and AMD and things like that. Car parts is a good analogy, but you know, at the same time, when it's been explained to you three different ways and you still don't understand at the end, that's, that's a little hard headed. That's being a little thick, but at least the boss was patient enough to get this guy to hopefully come around full circle. And let's start on a list. Forget the parts for a minute. What do you need? What kind of speed? What kind of memory? What kind of storage? And then that'll determine everything else down the line. So, you know, hopefully you got it. Just a little keyboard problem. Keyboard is weird. Please fix sometime today or tomorrow. Being low priority, I put it off and go work on other tickets that seem more urgent. I figured dirty or sticky keyboard, it doesn't seem that urgent. I get to her ticket. Okay, a very non-specific problem. I look in the users using a laptop. This is either going to be easy, hard, or gross. I take a walk up to her office with my cart and I see from 20 feet away the entire laptop is bulging to the point of breaking. Oh dear. The telltale signs that the internal battery is severely bulging and an immediate explosion slash fire hazard. So at the first sight of it, I put on my safety goggles, outdoor gloves, unplug it while she's typing on it. What are you doing? I didn't save my work. Be glad you still have a face. I'll be back in 15 with a different laptop that isn't on the verge of exploding. So into the fire bag on my cart that's dedicated for laptops on the verge of turning the office into a third circle of hell down to the back cave. I asked the very green intern, he's a junior and is on a summer internship, what he thinks the problem with the laptop is. His response? I ain't touching that. <laughs> Smart kid. So I had to get it under the fume hood and I was shaking as I took the screws out of the laptop. It was bulging so badly that when I got the first screw out the case visibly popped as tension released. I about messed my pants. I really felt like a bomb squad guy as I got the thing apart and the battery out and into a lithium ion fire bag. I leave the bag in the fume hood and finally take a look at her laptop, starting on the actual paperwork for the ticket. My heart rate is coming back under control as I look up the model number to get a new battery while the intern is getting another laptop ready. I end up pulling her files off the computer once I find a charger cord that works. My boss walks in, walks over to the fume hood to shut it off, does a double take when he sees the battery looking like a hot pocket, and then leaves it on. Now it's sitting in a bucket of sand five feet from the dumpster awaiting the hazmat company to come collect it. Just a minor keyboard issue? Yeah, no. P.S. One of the issues I thought was more urgent was configuring setting up a remote worker's printer to run off a form for someone to sign. Well, OP, normally that probably would have been more important, except this lady didn't say one word. I mean, you, you can't be that dense. You know, maybe your keyboard's not functioning properly because there's so much pressure built up under it. But you can't possibly be dense enough to not understand that your laptop is physically growing. Like picture picture a bag of microwave popcorn. You know, it starts out nice and flat. And then as it heats up and, you know, steam starts building up in the bag, the bag expands and then the corn starts to pop and it expands some more. And I mean, you notice these things unless you're totally stupid. Not that I'm calling her stupid. The Barbara problem. I'm here to talk about Barbara. That's not a real name for me or maybe you, but you probably have or have had a Barbara. That coworker who can't do a single ticket correctly and in fact must redo every ticket threefold before they're finally resolved. You avoid responding to them in group chat. You know better now. If you answer, you'll become responsible for resolving their entire issue, but their name is the one that will go on the ticket. Trying to explain something to them, even something simple that is vital to their everyday job, ends with you pulling out your hair as they attempt to repeat your words back to you and reveal their persistent misunderstanding as you listen to something that doesn't in the slightest resemble anything you just relayed to them. They even shotgun answers to every question asked in chat with no concern for whether the answer is correct or could add hours of extra labor and headaches for level 2 to sort out. Finally, and this is the most egregious part of all, your boss is fully aware of their incompetence and refuses to do anything about it. Perhaps your boss knows something you don't. Perhaps Barbara's not a real coworker. Perhaps instead they're an effigy, a totem, strategically maintained to channel and consolidate the spiritual miasma 
miasma? I don't know, of incompetence in one individual so as to ward the rest of the team against it. <laughs> or perhaps your boss simply derives catharsis and entertainment from your suffering. <laughs> it's not for you to know. You merely know that to live is to suffer and to have a Barbara is to live in suffering. I first became aware of Barbara on day one. She was assigned to train me. My workplace is a small company and very disorganized. So training involved throwing us onto the phone with no knowledge base to speak of or actual knowledge of our work at all. Pretending we knew exactly what we were doing and then begging our seniors to chat to. Please answer my question. I've been stalling this lady for 20 minutes and I have no idea what to do. When available, our trainers would ask us to ride along on some of their simpler calls or invite us to share our screen on Teams to walk us through something. I asked my assigned trainer, Barbara, for help exactly once. Having done IT work before, I had gathered as much information as possible and taken extensive notes on the call I received. A single instance of our software on one machine wouldn't connect. Another adjacent machine on the same network could. It could be a server issue, but my experience told me it was more than likely an issue local to the machine. I explained my suspicions to Barbara. Barbara explained to me that it was probably an issue with the server and proceeded to immediately connect to the server we hosted for the customer. She insisted that sometimes if you fiddled with some things, turned stuff off and on and disabled or enabled other things, the issue would be fixed. Holy cow. I'm not being vague on the details of her methodology for the sake of expedience. These are almost verbatim the exact words she used. To this day, I had no idea what she was doing on the server for the excruciating half hour that followed as I forced a strained smile and reassured the customer that our resident expert was looking into their issue. I think I don't want to know. Some knowledge is not for those who wish to remain of sound mind to know. At minute 25 of listening to Barbara make strange sounds of confusion and frustration over teams, I was getting desperate. Barbara was not listening to my insistent suggestions that perhaps investigating the local machine would prove more enlightening. Off to the side, I messaged another coworker who had been assigned to train a compatriot in much the same way Barbara had been assigned to me. He told me to hold on and that he'd take a look in a minute. To my great relief, Barbara, by happenstance, had an urgent appointment she needed to be on in five minutes and recommended I escalate the ticket to level two because this issue was completely beyond our ability to solve. I expressed my immense disappointment, <laughs> I bet you did, that she had to go, but assured her that I'd get right on it as I surreptitiously connect, as I surreptitiously, that's easy for you to say, connected the other senior to the computer I was working on. Within three minutes, he opened the software, looked at it, checked the settings, closed it, opened an INI file, changed a one to a zero, and gave the customer and me a concise and simple explanation as to why that change fixed it, as he demonstrated that everything was working now. I never made the mistake of asking Barbara for help again. In fact, I managed to consistently dodge her training, expressing my truly heartfelt disappointment that our schedule seemingly never lined up as I silently parried her every submitted request for access to my Outlook calendar. She seemed genuinely sorry that she wasn't fulfilling her obligation to me unknowingly being a far greater help to me in her complete absence. By the six month mark, I managed to badger my other seniors in private messages for solutions to every problem I ran across until my knowledge, until my own knowledge surpassed Barbara's limited skill set many times over, despite her, as I learned later, three years of tenure over me. Unfortunately, this fact is the only thing she managed to catch on to quickly, and soon I became yet another person constantly tagged in chat for her urgent self-made emergencies. There are more stories, many, many more of Barbara, each of them a solitary towering peak of frustration and futility in a mountain range of constant, incomprehensible interactions that leave me questioning my sanity and competence. But I'll leave you with just the one for now. It's funny, when I read this title, I was thinking, hmm, maybe Barbara could be the new Karen, since everybody gets so sick of hearing the word Karen. It doesn't sound like she's like nasty, mean, you know, just a crappy person and also wrong. She's just wrong. I don't know if it's innocently wrong or if she's just deliberately obtuse. You know, the way she went in <laughs> is talking about turning things off and on and pushing doohickeys and thingamabobs and all that stuff. I could probably have a cranked out chimpanzee do a better job on mechanical work on a car than this lady did on this computer server. I'm not even sure why she went directly to the server. After, you know, she should have listened to this guy. I know you're training the guy, but, you know, sometimes the trainee knows some stuff. Doesn't mean he knows everything, but you know, give the guy a little bit of credit. I've been to a few jobs in the past where people were training me and I tried to have a certain level of respect for them as the person training me or the fact that they had tenure or maybe they were just smarter than me. I didn't know them from Adam. So, you know, I try to give them that space and the respect that they, they I guess, deserve uh, until they start proving to me that they're idiots. And then 
that's when I'll start sliding little things in here and there, you know. Uh, if they insist, I'll go ahead and do things their effed up way. And then when things don't work, I'll say, well, maybe if we try it like this. And then all of a sudden it becomes their idea. And then they'll say, hey, how about you try it like that? Sure, I'll try it like that. Why not? It's frustrating, but what are you going to do? My first major incident. After working in logistics for eight years, I was back in IT with a short-term contract. With rusty IT skills, I was the on-site tech, and this user got a new role and new computer with more RAM since the Excel files are getting ridiculously large. This company had nearly 2,000 Windows units spread across the country to give a scale of the company. Handling 10 users is more of my skill zone, but I rolled with it and learned a lot on the way. The user needed access to all shared inboxes regarding customers, so that's tons of email. After two to three days, Outlook was extremely slow and the issue was a 50 gigabyte OST file. I helped with the cleanup, moved the user to new Outlook after asking our IT group for tips. Old Outlook is the problem, according to them. Two days later, the same issue appeared. The user was back using old Outlook again and the OST file was once again 50 gigabytes. Did the same thing again and everything was working again. Also added that Outlook synced one year old emails. Two days later, our IT infrastructure manager calls me and asks why and what the MIM major incident ticket is about since he's located in another country and doesn't speak our language. If you put MIM when you email our ticket address, it automatically sends a text to all senior IT people and managers. You do a MIM ticket if it's something that's going to cost the company a lot of losses. In the logs, only IT people had done it previously. But this user created this MIM since Outlook was slow. I go to the user and see that Outlook is constantly downloading at roughly 10 megabits per second. With some quick math, that's roughly 50 gigabytes in two days. And also the user had moved back to old Outlook. I told the user to learn new Outlook, removed local sync so Outlook doesn't download more emails, problem solved permanently, even if old Outlook is used. Not sure I understood more than half of that, but anyway, it sounds like the customer was being bullheaded. And I've been, I've been guilty of this myself. I'm sure other people have too. You get so set in your ways. I used <laughs> I used Microsoft Office Suite 2007 for years until I got a hold of a disk from the Board of Ed for Microsoft for Microsoft Office 2010. Until I used that up until recently when I jumped on with my wife on her Office 365 account. So yeah, I mean creatures of habit gonna have it. As for the other problems with this system, I have no idea. Maybe you guys can tell me down below and enlighten me a little bit. You guys are usually pretty good for that. So uh, yeah, let me know. Also, sorry for the lack of cats today. They both decided right now is the time to nap. So if I record another episode in a little bit, they'll probably be up bright eyed and bushy tailed and having their ass right in your view. So till the next video, we'll see you.